All right, we're going to do grid line metro on hacker rank. So what do they give us here? We have a grid, and these yellow squares, the green squares, and the blue square, they are railroad tracks, and they just want us to return the total number of squares that aren't taken up by railroad tracks. And there's a couple important notes here. Oh, so in this case, um, this number of squares that we'd want to return is the red squares. So yeah, anyway. Um, some important stuff about the problem, the constraints. So the number of rows and the number of columns can each be a billion. So we have a billion rows, billion columns. And where is the important note here? Yeah, so a train track may overlap with other train tracks in the same row. So um, yeah, that changes up our problem a little bit, the fact that tracks can overlap. All right, um, yeah, so let's get into it. So before we start, we actually need to change. The, notice they gave us a return value of an int. So this is in Java, but we have to change. So an int can only hold up to 2 to 31 minus 1. But uh, because n, which is the number of rows, m, and then the number of columns can each be a billion, um, basically the sometimes the correct answer is bigger than an integer, so we need to change this to a long, which I think is really silly because I don't I've never had to change the code definition for a problem before. Um, but anyway, uh, if we go, we have to go down the solution and also change the result to a long. So this is where they call our function and change that to a long. Um, don't blame me, blame hacker rank for that. Okay, um, so let's actually write our code now. I'm going to rename this to tracks. Okay, so let's get started. So first, let's just declare our total. So our total is going to be uh, n times m, which is just the total number of cells in our matrix. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, subtract all the squares that are taken up by tracks from this total, and then we're going to return the total at the end. Okay. Uh, and we're going to say if k equals 0, which means we have no... So k is the number of railroad tracks. We're just going to return uh, the total. And you'll, you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Uh, well, also, if, also if uh, k is 0, that means we have no railroad tracks, which means that there's... that the total would be... Uh, the entire grid. Um, but anyway, let's just keep going with the actual algorithm. So first, we're going to sort our tracks because they didn't tell us that the tracks would be sorted. So how? And I'll explain how we're going to sort it to make it easier. So what we're going to the idea is that we want to sort it so that we can merge all of the overlapping tracks into non-overlapping tracks, and then then we could subtract those non-overlapping tracks, like the length of them, from our total. Uh, but anyway, so do collections.sort, and this is just a comparator in Java, and we're going to say if t1, so we need to check if they're on the same row. So we're going to sort by rows first, and then we're going to sort by the starting column. So if t1.get0, actually let's go over the format of what a track looks like for really quick. So t1 or whatever, or a track, the first number is the row that it's on. The second index, or the first, you could say this would be the zero with index, this would be the first index. This is the start column, and then this is the end column, and this is inclusive. Okay, so first we're going to grab the row t1.get0. If t1.0, we're going to do actually, no, we should do it like this. Wait, what am I doing? No, t1.get0 equals t2.get0. So this is the row. Let me make this nicer. So if they're not equal, let's say if they're not equal, then we're going to return integer.compare t1.get0 to t2.get0. Okay, and I mistyped that. Okay, so what I'm saying here is if the rows aren't equal, then just sort by... I'm having trouble highlighting. If the rows aren't equal, then uh, sort by the rows. And if they are equal, then we want to compare the starting column so that they're sorted by the starting column if they're on the same row. Okay, so t1.get1 and t2.get1. Okay, so now we're sorting by the starting columns. And now that it's all sorted, we need to uh, actually merge all of the overlapping tracks. So I'm going to create a list here. And you know what? Let's just copy paste this. And we're going to call this the merge tracks. And this will be just an empty list. And what we're going to do is we're going to add 
the first track, so tracks.get0. And remember, these, these tracks are now sorted. So we're just grabbing the first track in our sorted tracks. And we're going to add it to our merge tracks. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. But basically, I'm going to compare my last merge track to my current track, see if they overlap. And if they overlap, then I'm going to merge it into my last merge track. It, that's basically the whole algorithm. But uh, let me actually code it out. And you'll pro it'll probably be easier to see. So uh, for int i equals 0, i is less than tracks. So we're just looking through our tracks. And we're going to say list integer. We're going to get the last track in our merge tracks. Dot get uh, merge tracks dot size minus one. So this is just the last track in our merge tracks. And now we need to get the current track that we're processing. So that would be tracks dot get i. OK. And, oh, wait, this should be i equals one. My bad because we added our first track here and now we're going to loop from i i equals 1 to the rest of and go through the rest of the tracks so that so that means that this last track is the in the first iteration this last track is actually the first track that i added here and then this would be the second track in my tracks list what i'm going to do is i'm going to check if they are first i need to check if they're on the same row if they're on the same row then i need to check if they overlap if they're not on the same row, then there's no possibility for them to overlap, right? Because they're not completely on they're on two completely different rows. But anyway, so let's check if they're on the same row. So uh, if it equals the track dot get zero. Uh, so that means they are on the same row. And if my start column, so remember, let's just paste this down here so it's easier to see what I'm doing. So get zero is returning the row to make sure they're on the same row. And now what I'm going to check, I'm going to check if my start column, or sorry, I'm going to check if my, uh, I'm going to check if last's end column is greater or equal to the start column of this track, of the current track that I'm on. Let me, let me just type it. So uh, if last.get2, so this is the end column, is greater or equal to current, or I called it track. Um, should I call it? I feel like I should call. Oh, I'll just leave it. I, I should have called it current, but whatever. Track dot get um, one. So if the end, basically this is just checking if they overlap. So if my end column, if the last end column is greater or equal to the start column of this current track, then that means that they overlap. And if they overlap, all I have to do is change. So last dot set two. All it's saying is change the end column to the bigger of let me type myself so either i'm either the last track was longer or this current track is longer but whichever one is longer just take the bigger one and make that the new uh the, the new endpoint for the column uh so yeah uh so this is where the merging is happening i'm just taking i'm just setting the the end column to the bigger of either myself or this new tracks end column because they overlap. Okay. And if they don't overlap, well, then I'm just going to add a track because there's no overlap. Okay. Uh, now what? So now that our tracks are all merged, that means that merge tracks uh, is a, now a set of non overlapping tracks. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through our merge tracks. We'll just call it track. And we're going to subtract the length of each track from our total. So we're going to do merge tracks dot get two. So this is the end column minus the start column. And we're going to add one. And let me explain why I'm adding one in a second. OK, so the reason I'm adding one, let's just say that this was the end column was four. So if end call equals four and the start column also equals four. Well, this just means that there's a railroad track on column four. So they take up one spot, right? Well, zero or sorry, four minus four would give us zero. But this takes up one square in our grid. So we actually need to add one to get 
you know, zero plus one is one. Okay. So that's why I add the one there. And then we just subtract all this from our total. And then whatever is left after we subtract all the tracks from our total is our correct answer. So let's just run it and see if it, we got any compile errors or anything. Uh, let's see. Does it work? Processing comp compilation error. What did I do wrong? Merge total merge tracks I get to. What's wrong with this? Oh, I'm so dumb. It should be track here. <laughs> track. So I, I put merge tracks in here. It should have just been the track that I got out of the merge tracks. Okay, my bad. All right, so let's submit it. And I messed up somewhere. Where did I mess up? Did I? Oh, okay, right here. I'm pretty sure this is it. So the notice these are in. So if this if you you know, might not be coding in Java, but in Java, uh, this will do integer multiplication because they're both ints, and then it will cast it to a long. But the problem is that it can integer overflow here. So what I need to do is I need to cast one of these to a long. That way it'll upcast this to a long before doing the multiplication, and then it'll do a long multiplication and then store it in our total. So let's try that one more time. Cool. Uh, so that's how you do this problem. Let's do. Let's go over the time complexity really quick. I passed everything. All right. So time complexity. Uh, so k. So k is the number of tracks, right? So um, this sort here is just going to take k or big O of k log k. I don't know how I want to type that. That's good. K log k, and this would just be O of k. Is pretty clear that's okay, and uh, okay. So right here, where I do tracks, I get i. Assuming that this is an O of one operation, then this remains O of k. But like, let's say because they didn't really they didn't specify if this was an array list or a linked list. They just give us a list. If it's a linked list, then this turns into k squared because this would be an O of k operation, and O of k times O of k. Well, that would just be k squared. Um, but I'm going to assume that they just gave us an array list. And if, and if it was a link list, then what we'd have to do is change this to like an iterator. We'd have to change it to an iterator so that we can grab all the elements in O of one time, or it would be O of n for all the elements, but O of one for each element one at a time. Um, and you just have to skip the first iteration or something so that we could, uh, not, so we, we account for the fact that we took out the first element and added it to our merge tracks. But anyway, we're just going to assume that's O of one. And uh, anything else? And this is just O of K. So then what we have is O of K, O of K. So our whole entire time, and this is K log K. So the whole thing is just upper bounded by the sort, which is K log K. All right, so that's time complexity. Um, And the oh, I guess the space complexity would be O of K because of the extra list that I created. And I actually... It would be O of K because of the merge sort too, because this is a merge sort. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, hopefully uh, if this helped, you can um, give it a thumbs up. You can uh, subscribe if you want. But anyway, uh, thanks. Bye.